bright duty. Every student matters. Now students, I will take up some important questions from this section, uh, section of animal husbandry. Let us start. Question number 1. How do good animal husbandry practices benefit the farmers? So, good animal husbandry practices, they will give you better breed of whether it is the cattle or the poultry, they provide better breed. So, which yields in imp increasing the yield for the farmers. So, improvement in quality of the yield as well as quantity of the yield. So, whatever type of animal husbandry practice, whether it is uh, whether it is poultry or dairy farming or beekeeping. So, if a bit, if the breed is better, there will be better yield, good quality and good quantity of yield can be produced. So, it benefits the farmer. Question number two: What are the benefits of cattle farming? So, cattle farming they are they are utilized for two purposes. First is to obtain milk, and second is as labor. They are use their labor is utilized to work in the farms and to carry the loads. Question number 3, which method is commonly used for improving cattle breeds and why? The commonly used method is cross breeding. So, cross breeding between Indian and the uh, exotic or the foreign breed is done to obtain desirable characteristics. All right. For example, the Swiss cow, it has long lactation period and the, our Indian indigenous cow was resistant to diseases. So, cross breeding has been done and now we have good breeds of cow which have both the desirable characteristics. Next question, explain the factor that are to be considered before deciding the nature of feed for the cattle. So, if the cattle is to be used for labor that is the drought or whether it is for milk production, these are the factors. So, if it is for labor, then more of roughage is required, but during the lactation period, the cow require more of micronutrients. So, some additives, uh, micronutrient additives are to be given. So, it depends upon the purpose or the uh, duration during which you are given, you are feeding the cattle. Next, name two types of animal feed and their function. So, first type of animal feed is roughage. Okay, and second type is the nutrient nutrient rich food. So, roughage is high in fiber, nutrient rich food is low in fiber but rich in nutrients. Next question, discuss the implication of the following statement. It is interesting to note that poultry in India is, uh, is India's most efficient converter of low fiber food stuff into high nutrition, uh, nutritious animal protein food. So, poultry birds they are fed with the, uh, the farm waste which are actually not suitable for human consumption. So, very cheap source of food is available for them, they eat it and what we obtain from them is meat and egg which is rich in protein all right and it is rich uh, in nutrient. So, it is a way of converting the low a nutrient food into a rich nutrient food. Question number 7, what management practices are common in dairy and poultry farming? All right. So, we studied about dairy farming and poultry farming. So, the common practices are firstly taking care of the shelter. Shelter should be clean, it should be well ventilated, insecticide should be sprayed. Second is about the what do we feed them. The care should be taken that they are given a well balanced diet so that they are healthy and mortality rate is low. Third is prevention from diseases. In both the cases, we take care that these animals, they are prevented from various diseases for that vaccination can be done or healthy diet can be given to them. So, these practices are common for dairy farming and poultry farming. Next question. What are the differences between broilers and layers in their management? Broilers are those poultry birds which are reared to obtain meat, while layers are those poultry birds which are reared to obtain egg. So, uh, there is a difference in which they are managed. The broilers, they are fed with high protein diet, with adequate fat as well as the feed should be rich in vitamin A and K. 
all right so that the, their the mortality rate is low and they are shorter but healthier on the other hand for uh, egg laying birds the care is taken that micronutrients are given to them they need more space and more better lightning in the uh, in their farms all right next question how are fish obtained fish can be obtained by two two methods first is by capturing so which is called uh, cap capture fishing and second is by culture that is you yourself put the sea, uh, fish seeds into the ponds and the, when the fish they breed they reproduce you catch them so there are two ways of of obtaining the fish the, both of them can be done either in marine resources or in fresh water resources like rivers or ponds next question differentiate between inland fishery and marine fishery inland fishery is done in fresh water resources like uh, and brackish water like ponds rivers lagoons marine fish fishery is done in the coastal areas and in the deep sea beyond next question what do you understand by composite fish culture in composite fish culture five to six varieties of fish are selected then in a single pond the culture is done okay the selection is such that they should not compete with food for each other with each other so overall the yield will increase from a single pond we'll get more quantity of fish because they grow in different layers of the pond so it's an important question and i've just discussed it in the text next question what are the advantages of composite fish culture one advantage is improved yield second advantage is that since these fish they do not compete with food so all the food available in the pond is utilized next question one disadvantage of composite fish culture actually the fish they breed only during the monsoon season so a good quality seed is not available uh, throughout the year so this advantage can be overcome by providing hormonal stimulation to the fish in their feed so that they reproduce throughout the year next question how do you differentiate between capture fishing mariculture and aquaculture capture fishing means just capturing the fish which are naturally growing whether it is in inland water resources or in the sea all right so just capturing the fish mariculture means the culture of the fish in seas or oceans aquaculture means culture of the fish in fresh water resources like ponds or rivers so they are different these two are uh, cult, uh, examples of cultures next question differentiate between apiculture and aquaculture apiculture means rearing and taking care of uh, uh, promoting the growth of bees uh, bees <coughs> to collect honey and beeswax on the other hand aquaculture means uh, rearing of fish to obtain meat from the fish to capture them all right so there are two different practices to obtain two different food products next question what does quality of honey depends upon quality of honey depends upon pasturage which is available around the apiaries because honey bees they collect the nectar from the flowers and convert it into honey so the quality of honey and the taste of honey depends upon the uh, upon the quality of flowers which are growing around them all right that is called pasturage next question what are advantages of uh, beekeeping first of all low investment all right so it requires very low investment even the small farmers can do it second is it the land requirement is not there okay so even the small farmer who has a small piece of land apart from growing crops he can use it for uh, this uh, apiculture all right so this is advantage so it provides another source of income for the farmers an extra source of income apart from farming next question what are the desirable characteristics of bee variety suitable for honey production first is the Uh, quantity of honey produced in a beehive 
the how can it be improved if the honey stays in the if the these bees if they stay in the beehive for a longer duration of time if this is improved then the quantity will improve second is they should be sting less okay they should sting less or they should not sting at all so that is another quality then they should breed well reproduction rate of reproduction should be fast so these are the desirable characteristics of the bee variety which we desire last question what is pasturage and how is it related to honey production so i just told you pasturage is the quality of the flower or the flowering plants which are growing around the uh, around the apiaries where uh, honey bees are actually uh, promoted to grow so the whatever pasturage is available the taste and the quality of honey will depend upon that so if you grow good kind of pasturage around the apiaries the quality and the quantity of the honey will be better and even the quantity will be good so that's all along from this chapter so from this chapter we learned that uh, animal husbandry can be improved by scientific methods to improve the quality and the quantity of food which we obtain from animals thank you students